Hello, Michael Schiebler here from Classics. Today we're going to have a look at the Jaguar E-Type. We really like those cars here. We're going to focus on the Series 1. There is many variations of the Series 1 and we're going to try to help you find out which model is the one for you. So today we are fortunate we have three cars here and we're going to bring you through the changes in chronological order. And we're going to start over here with an early car. Um, as I mentioned before, they started already in 61. This car is from 63. So the early cars, also sometimes referred to as flat floor cars, as you can tell from the name, had a flat floor. In mid-62 they discovered it's better if they have a little bit more room underneath the feet, makes it easier and a little bit more space in the cabin. Also the really early cars, sometimes referred to as cars with bonnet latch, had an outside closing here. And uh, also uh, they could have really early cars, um, louvers that are with a small plate from the inside. But then you're talking like really early cars. Um, I think what is characteristics for all the Series 1 cars, of course, is the covered headlights and having the taillights above the bumper. So mechanically, these early cars had the 3.8 liter engine. I'm going to open the bonnet and show you. Just first want to mention this super cool hardtop, original Jagger hardtop for this car. That's a really rare option. Um, here we see what the engine looks like. What you also need to know is that these early cars had the Moss gearbox. It was uh, like this up to 1965 with uh, no synchro on the first gear, which means when you come to a stop sign you have to stop fully and then you can put in the first gear and go. So now we had a look at the 3.8 liter Jaguar E-Type Series 1. We're going to have a look at the inside features of this model. And of course, I think everyone immediately notices is these beautiful bucket seats that everybody wants to have in their Jaguar E-Type. Um, you should know that the, the seat back is not adjustable. So when you sit in, this is your position. I am 176 centimeters. You can be a little bit taller than me. I'd say up to 180, 185. After that, I think you're really pushing it. Um, the steering wheel is adjustable in and out, so you can move like this. Um, what else in here is really significant is these brushed aluminum panels that these early cars had. I think the year after this one, they were covered in, vi in black vinyl, the inside here. All right, so now we're gonna move over to a car that is from 1966. And quite a lot of things happened. The main thing is probably you have a new style of seats, which is much more adjustable and is much better suited for bigger drivers. They go much further back and there is more space. Now the panels are covered and of course, now we have the 4.2 liter unit under the bonnet. We also have a full synchro gearbox. Visually, under here, there is actually nobody that can see the difference. It looks pretty much identical to the 3.8. What I really like with the 3.8, that it's a really snappy, really happy, great sound engine. When you come up to the 4.2, it sounds, yeah, basically you, you can sound, you can hear that you have a slightly bigger engine. 
Um, but of course also now you have a little bit more power, you have a little bit more drivable car. So like I mentioned, this car is from 1966, but these major changes, full synchro gearbox, 4.2 liter engine, better seats came in 1965 already. Now we're still on series one, or I should say, a lot of people want to call this model series one and a half. And now you start to see some changes. And the major change here is the headlights. Now you don't have the covered headlights anymore. Actually, series one and a half was really a short-lived uh, model and there is many changes. So some cars may have some certain look uh, with small details that is different on later cars. Uh, so this, this uh, headlight trim, for example, is special for series one and a half. And then it was another one coming on series two. So apart from the front headlights, the exterior is pretty much the same. You still have the taillights above the bumper, not later on series two, they move below. But inside the car, we have more changes on the series one and a half. For all of you that really love those cool flip switches, we have now changed into these black ones that you push like this. And uh, you have now a lid here for the glove compartment, which was just a hole before. You have now the ignition here on the steering wheel, which was up here in the middle with the start button before. And uh, yeah, still adjustable steering wheel. You have uh, a headlight switch, which was common in the 70s when you wanted to pass somebody, you flipped your headlights to signal that you were gonna pass. The door cards also look slightly different with your handles a little bit tucked in like this. Uh, you have your ashtray here in the middle. The seating position remains pretty much the same. You have the same amounts of space inside and you can, you can also here, uh, series one and a half, you can move down the backrest a little bit. Of course, when you have the soft top down, it's limited how much incline you can have, but you can be quite large driver and still be comfortable in this car. All right, so we're gonna have a quick look underneath the hood on this lovely primrose yellow car. And as you can see here, it looks a little bit different. Um, cam covers have these uh, stripy look on them. And maybe some of you noticed that this car has two Stromberg carburetors, and that's because this car was sent over to America in 1968. The European models still had triple SU, so it has slightly more horse, slightly less horsepower than the European version, but I'd say it's more from car to car if you're gonna notice that. So to summarize, which E-Type that will be the one for you, I think we first need to check your length. How tall are you as a driver? Because if you are taller than me, you will probably not be so happy in the really early cars. You need to move in to something that is from 1965 or later when you have a lot more adjusting possibilities with the seats. And then I think you need to think about what type of engine you want because you have the 3.8 liter which is probably the sportiest E-type there is but do you want to have that with the sacrifice of having the Moss gearbox? No matter what brand uh, you're talking about, it's always the earliest car that are the most pretty. If you take Volvo P1800s or Alpha GTVs, the early cars has these more elegant features. Um, and the later on you have more drivability. Here you have the Synchro and the gearbox, which of course is a big benefit for many people. So why should you buy a series one and a half? Well, 
there's practically only one reason, and that is because these cars are slightly cheaper than the other two. For most people, the choice is practically if you're gonna have a 3.8 liter or a 4.2 liter. Now, if you choose the series one and a half, you will get a car that is the same pretty much, but for a slightly lower price, because these cars are a little bit less desirable because of the front headlights and the interior switches. So this concludes our little guide to choosing the Series 1 E-Type. We hoped, uh, we, I hope that it has helped you along because we have a lot of customers that have been asking about these cars, which one that they should choose. So hope that this is a helpful video for you. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, see ya.